Hey there, folks. I'm Matt Hansen. And I'm John Johnson. And you're listening to Planes, Trains, and Comic Books. The podcast where we discuss favorites we've reread, both classic and new comics we want to read, and everything else in between. And here's the comic we picked this week. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Planes, Planes Trains, and Comic, comic Books. Books. Today, we are uh, finishing up our Halloween month uh, set of spooky podcasts. <laughs> so, um, I know this this month or this time we didn't do as many as we have last time, but I think we got some like good variation on a lot of the books. Yeah, we can't do 13 <laughs> and or more every single yeah. time, I think. I definitely get that. I would have killed myself if that happened again. So, <laughs> so uh, But yeah, so this week we read The Plot, which is a Vault comic. Yeah, this was a Patreon-voted exclusive. Yes. So speaking of Patreon, if y'all would like to vote, we always do one uh, episode a month that is directly uh, voted on by the patrons, and we'll, we just give you guys some options, you guys pick it. Um, and so this was a winner of that. So we thank you all for voting. We had this, this, uh, poll was for newer horror series. So stuff that has come out in the last three years or so, like there's been a bunch of new horror stuff coming out. So I had read any of it. Yeah. So Not to like, say that we won't read probably the rest of them too at some point. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This was to make They'll sure we get up. it in for, you know, the spooky month. Exactly. And, uh, and then speaking of, uh, our Patreon, we got some changes coming on, uh, We've been getting a, a lot of stuff uh, going on at work and whatnot in our lives, so we are going to go to a bi-monthly format where we're going to release a podcast twice a month uh, on the first and third weeks of every month, and then um, and we're going to do we want to also make some more exclusive stuff for our patrons, so we're going to do a special third podcast that's only going to be on Patreon exclusively. So. Uh, that way, we're giving a little bit more to Patreon, or Patreon, even though uh, we're getting a little bit of a break for ourselves each each month because it's just been it's just been crazy at work and everything. So. Yeah, but you know, this will be a two prong kind of thing because it's going to give us a little bit more time, but we'll be able to dive in and do maybe some thicker ones, some bigger books that we've been wanting to get that maybe would take two normal episodes or more. Yeah, yeah. we we're I was like, hey, we could do like Berserk the entire series, or like <laughs> or like. Uh, you know, some more of those like uh, like Vinland Saga or something fatter or yeah. or Watchmen or something. Something that would just take a lot of episodes to get through and talk about um, that we could actually spend time on on the Patreon and uh, really work through and dive into it. So, so we got twice a month and then a patron exclusive podcast. Yes. And the patrons still obviously will get to vote on the main podcast, one of the ones that we do that month yes. in general. So uh, it's going to be the third, the third, the third one. one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Third, third week of the month. Third week yeah. of the month. Yeah. And pay, so patrons are getting a lot of uh, kind of a lot of extra love. Yeah, so yeah. Definitely. And, and I'm keeping my Swamp Thing and and bi-monthly Hellblazers as well going on. So, And if you're a Patreon on the Hellblazer one, you're getting that every week as well, too. So, Heck yeah. And on the, on the Hellblazer one, you also will get the same, you know, extra podcast from Patreon as well. Nice. So that's just included. And then if you want the Hellblazer, you get an extra. The Hellblazer. incentives yeah. are go over. Yes, exactly. So we're trying to make it a little bit more uh, f- uh, like uh, exclusive for the patrons and get a little bit more bang for your buck. So uh, that's coming out. We're starting next week. We're going to be doing uh, Ghost World by Daniel Klaus. It was a movie in the 90s uh, with Scarlett Johansson. It was one of her first movies, I believe. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, Steve Buscemi is in it. And I think it's about I, okay. I saw this movie a long time ago. It's my, one of my wife's favorite movies, and she loves this book as well. And she, I'm like, we're going to be reading her copy of this because <laughs> I, I didn't even buy this before. But I've been trying to get into more indie uh, or alt comics as well. Call them not indie, which is like independent pr- uh, produced ones, but like alternative, alternative comics. So okay. like you know, um, the counterculture comics, especially Daniel Klaus. I've been reading a lot of his stuff. Um, trying to get into more of that weird stuff uh, that like I don't know I was never pre predispositioned to liking it I'm more of like a uh, traditional comics not necessarily superheroes only but like you know like the the stuff that's just kind of slice of life or maybe apathetic teenagers and stuff yeah. like that like I I was not really into that so I'm trying to get into that more um, get it it's the uh, what's the uh, what's the director of uh, like Rushmore and uh, 
the Royal Tenenbaum. Oh movie. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but yes, that it's like it's that, like that, that style of or like or books. like uh, like the Beatnik writers. You know, it's like yeah. Factotum or something, or um, where it's just like it's just about a guy that's walking, going town to town. There's not really like a story necessarily, or if there is, it's like a bunch of separate narratives going on that are loosely connected kind of thing. So. Um, I haven't really dug in too far. We've we've uh, you know we've got this one coming up, and then uh, you know there's the, I, if we like this one, if the you know listeners like it, we might do some more. I've just been really into it, uh, trying to get into them. So. Yeah, well, like we've touched some here and there. We did the the Betchdale one for um, yes, most of the ones we do are for like those months. Yeah, because like. <laughs> for like Black History Month or LGBTQ Month, and it's like uh, be, that's because those tend to be slice of life stories or you know more independent published stuff i don't know if they're necessarily alt comics because those are uh personal stories so like biographies or okay. things like that usually these are like not biographies they're about characters but they're like but not heroes not heroes just normal people usually weird people fucked up people hmm. so it's an interesting section of comics that I well, I look done. forward to seeing that because honestly I don't think I've ever even seen Ghost World the movie so okay maybe after this we should watch uh, it. yeah well definitely after we'll should, we should do it for a movie night or something but that sounds good um so anyway but uh, this week the plot the plot but before we get into oh, it sorry I want to say thank you to our patrons yes Otaku Mike Hoku and our newest patron Christian thank you very thank much you all very much we appreciate you and that's why we're trying to put some more pa- patreon content out there uh, hopefully you feel like you're it's, it's worth it kind of thing so uh we do appreciate you guys a lot and anyway back to this this week's uh comic the plot uh it is written by tim daniel and michael morrissey uh with art by joshua dixon and i hickson i'm sorry hickson and i i've never uh, seen anything drawn by joshua hickson it's good he, he's a really good artist for horror especially this kind of like plant-based horror oh very much so very cool uh, you know, he could do like a Swamp Thing book, I think, pretty good. Especially <laughs> if it leaves more into the horror stuff, it would be good. Um, and then uh, I've never read, read, read anything written by Tim Daniel, but I have read uh, stuff from Michael Morrissey. Uh, he did the Barbarian. What's it called? No, it's, it's called. Uh, what the heck is it called? It's about the Barbarian. I think uh, I can't remember what it's called. It's it's about the Barbarian with an axe that drinks blood and talks i did a i did a video on it like a review of the yeah. first issue um i why can't i remember what it's called it's called barbaric that's what it's called barbaric um okay. so uh that is a series that's ongoing right now that he's writing he is very much uh he likes to write like sword and sorcery but with a lot of funniness in it like maybe even like a modern speech which can be a little bit weird to me um like it fits for his book barbaric because he that's his world and he created it from scratch he just recently wrote the the last issue of um the death dealer comic that's coming out Oh, okay and the way he wrote just took me completely out of that world and i was like i don't like that so so hopefully (laughs) he doesn't continue that arc Uh, i think it was just a one-off story that he wrote but it wasn't like bad or anything but it was just like wow just like completely weird the way that that. people are talking is not how it's been established in the rest of the world or whatever so um but yeah anyway so i like his writing when he's kind of writing his own thing and that's you know this is like an original horror story um and uh it is i will say this uh this book is only this certain book that we're reading volume one is four issues long but the uh series overall is only eight issues i personally think they should have just released this as one big volume because it's not a, a hard read or anything. I, I will say, yeah, the the first volume was not hard, and then it leaves you on a weird kind of a cliffhanger. I'll, we'll just kind of yeah, we'll, throw it. We don't have to we'll spoil the whole thing. Yeah. But it leaves on a weird cliffhanger, and I was like, okay, and I moved on with my day, you know, getting ready to you know, we'll record with Matt later. And then I asked where Matt and I were discussing a little before, and he's like, I had to read the second one, right? Cause, yeah, I was like, well, you can't just leave it there. Yeah, and it's then, a weird spot. And, it, like, they were both on sale, too, because it's Halloween or whatever, so I'm like, okay, let me just pick these up and so or they pick up the second one and i read it i'm like why was this split into two volumes it could have just been a uh, money man i guess <laughs> I yeah i mean that's probably what it was but still like i would be i would be pissed if i read that it, like if i bought the first volume and i was like really like there's no complete story in it it just leaves you hanging and yeah. so uh we'll get to that but um 
but yeah, so this this book starts off in 1974 in Cape Augusta, Maine, um, and you know there's like a creepy old house as a lot of these <laughs> these places it's have. Stephen King book. It's, yeah, it's like a, it's kind of Stephen King ish. <laughs> Definitely deals with a family and stuff, but uh, but yeah, so there's uh, uh, this old house in Maine, uh, and this guy named uh, dang, what's his name? Uh, Chase. Chase. This guy named Chase. Uh, pulls up to it and it's his old family home. He, he's moving in there. Uh, we're not exactly sure why yet, but uh, it's just him going there. And uh, the main thing we learn is that the family has a motto: "Give before you take." That's no, been passed. Give before you receive. I'm saying, yeah, give before you receive. Well, I thought it's a take too, but it's no. I think it's give before you receive because it's not like you're taking something. Some something is giving you something back. Yes. It's not. It's not like, yeah, it's not like a take a penny, leave a penny kind of thing. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, there, there's this family motto uh, established with his family. And also when this, when Chase gets into this house, you know, it's, there's no electricity, I guess, or something. And he just kind of breaks in too. He just kind of kicks the door in and it's in the middle of the night and he's drinking and he's got like a sleeping bag. So it's kind of like, okay, what's this dude, what's this dude doing? And we see the narration over these panels is someone talking about how awesome uh, their father was. You know, like, my dad was a great guy, and he gave me everything I needed to be the person I am now. And that's where we learn the motto where he says, he always said, you know, you have to give to receive and this kind of thing. And so uh, it turns out the person talking is Chase's brother, uh, Charles, I believe, right? What's his name? No, Charles is the dad. Oh, wait, um, who's the brother? I never remember people's Yeah, names. I don't, you know, honestly, I don't I remember, I, I don't remember getting his name. I don't remember it. Yeah, you're right. Charles is the dad because the dad has just died. Yeah. So his brother, we don't need to, we don't need to say his name. It's right. Well, he's he's not even as as big and as important. As right. This. Yeah. But this his brother uh, Chase's brother who's giving this speech. So Chase is at their house because the dad just died. The brother is at the funeral or the uh, wake, I wake guess maybe. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, giving a speech about his dad, um, and we see like, oh, he's got uh, a wife and they have kids, and it seems like any he, he runs like a phar- pharmaceutical company. So he seems pretty well off, whereas Chase seems pretty uh, not. Like he's mm. drunk in, in an old house, you know. So we get a little bit about that. Um, and then <laughs> I thought this was like a great way to like uh, get you into the comic immediately. First off, they start you with like, well, this is kind of weird and ominous, this this wake and this, you know, converse, or the, uh, the speech that the, the other brother's giving. And then we go to the other brother's house, and he – uh, this is after the wake. He uh, he lives in a nice a house. nice beach house, like overlooking the water, like hanging out over the water. Looks like Iron Man's house. Yeah, ex- exactly. Uh, all glass and everything. So you know they're well off uh, because also he runs a pharmaceutical company. And you see him and his wife talking, um, and then they're like, "I think everything's gonna be just yeah. fine." Yeah. Well, you know they're yeah they're like well you know well the kids will need to like work on things but, but and that's what we do learn the kids names because they become important Zach yeah exactly and McKenzie. McKenzie. yeah so uh so just as they're like we think everything's gonna be just fine they like kiss each other and then all of a sudden like a shadow appears and the dad looks behind him and there's this giant we'll call him swamp thing in this uh <laughs> evil swamp thing he's well, we can't looking. say swamp thing it's man uh, man of the swamp yes sw- uh, <laughs> thing of the swamp thing of the swamp yeah <laughs> But, uh, but, yeah, so this thing of the swamp, uh, <laughs> it, it appears right behind them, and then it grabs both of them and snaps the wife's neck, throws her out the window through the glass onto the beach, and then uh, pins the dad down and gives him a big old kiss. <laughs> I didn't know when I saw that at first. I was like, "Is did this go like Looney Tunes right away? Yeah, like, what? Like, what? Mm, <laughs> 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 yeah, and then uh, and then he proceeds to throw the guy through the window after that. Yeah, but and yeah, then he when he lands on the ground and like blood is coming out of his face, I was like, oh okay, well maybe not. <laughs> yeah, and then the brother like is able to say like the the wife's name last. Uh, her name was Wendy, I guess. And then they both die on the beach. Uh, well, I guess the guy's not fully dead, but then the the swamp thing comes out and jumps back down and then starts to smash his head into the sand and then whispers in the guy's ear. First, you must give. <laughs> uh, very creepily, uh, and then uh, and then we cut back to Chase, who is I guess it must be the next day. Yeah, you know, Chase is uh, doing some some demo on the it's house. Call, yeah, remodeling. Remodeling. Demo, He's remodeling demo. the <laughs> shitty house, 
And then he gets what, like a telegram? Or that- yeah, I think it's a telegram. <laughs> I've never, I didn't know people. I guess it's 1974, so that's not yeah. weird. Um, but yeah, a telegram uh, that says like, "Oh, your your brother's been killed and his wife, so now like you are the t- caretaker of his kids." And so then the next thing we see is Chase is uh, at the funeral of his brother and his sister in law, and he's talking about Charles. Okay, so he was it was Charles too. I guess he was. Okay, Charles so it's Charles the second. Yeah. I guess. Okay. So there you go. Um, I didn't pick up on that. <laughs> yeah, and then we and then so he's you know he's doing a nice eulogy about his brother. Um, although it does seem like not that there was like a falling out between him and his brother, but it was more like him and his family. Yeah, like Chase has been the black sheep, we'll say, of the family because he's not doing the things that you want him or that they wanted him to do. I don't know what they wanted him to do. They never really go into what exactly he didn't want to do more than the family. Um kind of thing i thought they were gonna like reveal some shit but they don't but they yeah don't. he didn't know and even in the second trade they okay. don't so that's what i'm saying like uh, that's why i read the second trade too because it was like there's this mystery about this family and then it was like it doesn't none of it gets answered like none of that gets answered so <laughs> i was like okay uh anyway you're just leaving these breadcrumbs that you're not gonna explain fully or pick up or whatever is all right we'll just this is for the birds yeah we'll just leave those there <laughs> and maybe we'll do a plot you know se- uh, number two or whatever the unanswered questions yeah the lot <laughs> um so, so plot two six feet deeper there you go uh so then we see you know this is where we meet the kids Mackenzie and zach and we see that they're not transitioning well with their parents death of course so the boy doesn't talk out loud anymore uh he just talks to their german shepherd dog and Mackenzie's kind of the older sister and she's uh watching out for him but She's also like sassy because she's a teenager, but also she's going through all this shit with her parents dying, and they're giving uh they're they're cast they're like I guess they got the ashes of their parents and they're throwing them out into the ocean, like the Big Lebowski. Luckily, they yeah. don't blow back into the <laughs> brother's face in this, but uh, that's what it made me think. I thought it would be super ridiculous if they just back yeah, in the back yeah, in the, the face, the brother's face. What the fuck, man? <laughs> now he talks. Now he talks. The brother talks. So, of course, now that that's done, the funeral's over. They're moving in with Charles. And Charles, the only house or he has. I'm sorry, Chase. Oh, okay. And the only the only house Chase has is um, the old family house that's, like, run down. He's been remodeling it, working on it. But it ain't really ready for, like, move-in, especially of kids and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so they get there. And the second they get there, we get the old sheriff being like, what are you doing here? <laughs> Move yeah, back in, exactly. Huh? Yeah, the sheriff. What are you doing here? Oh, are we gonna get back? Nope. No. Yeah, we don't get any backstory. I, I you never find out what that what happened. Why he's so suspicious of them or whatever. But yeah, Magnus, the sheriff, is here uh, just to be a dick, I guess, and be like, "You don't belong here. Get out of here. We don't like your family. The Blaines are a curse upon this city or whatever, this town." Yep. Uh, so he just. From, I guess, high school or whatever. I don't know. Just doesn't like Ch- Chase. Chance? Chase. Chase. Uh, doesn't like Chase. <laughs> I'm going to get their names eventually. <laughs> so, uh, doesn't, doesn't Like, Magnus is an easy one to remember because it's such an it's odd so, one. Yeah. But, like, all of them are named fucking Chuck or Charles or Chase or whatever. So, I'm like, okay. It's one of those CH names. I got it. But, anyway, they have a big argument. And, of course, like, the... Uh, the kids go in the house and they see like how weird and decrepit and all this stuff is. Uh, and then we see like a first like vision that Mackenzie had. She goes into a room and she like trips on something. And then it's like roots have attached to her foot, which are what tripped her. And then we see like this tree grown behind her. And, uh, and there's like a dead woman hanging upside down on it, on the trunk of it. And it's whispering to her, uh, and it's just it's just weird. I didn't too much yeah. plain. Uh and we don't know exactly why this happening. And then the other big important part, which I didn't this didn't like click to me that this was such a big important thing. But uh we see the brother running, catching frogs in the outside. This is all going on while uh Chance is ta- Chase, Chase is sorry, getting Chase. <laughs> getting chewed out by yeah. the sheriff. Yeah, so this is like all concurrent. So uh the brother is chasing frogs with the dog. And goes and finds this big ass bog hmm. in the middle of a field, and he falls in. And as he falls in, uh, it just pulls him down. We see there's like lots of roots and everything in this water, 
It's kind of like reminding me of Lord of the Rings when Frodo falls in the oh yeah evil the, bogs or mm-hmm. whatever or the the battlefield that was a bog now I yeah what it's where all the elves and stuff from battles all the old age the second age battles so. yes and they all p- try to pull him in down and then Gollum pulls him out or whatever or, or sam pulls him out one yeah. of the two uh so yeah like he gets pulled down and that's like the end of the first issue so this definitely has like a good uh flow this book does because like there's a lot of cliffhangers and a lot of making you want to uh continue reading and it's not like super verbose either. So you're just getting like little things you need to know and then some dialogue and then like maybe a little narration and stuff. But it's it's it flows well. I that's one thing I liked about this is it made me want to get all the way to the end, like just cause like it, you know it had a good flow to it and storyline. Um, and then we so the second issue starts with this girl named uh, what's her name Reese Reese yeah. and um, and she's. I guess in jail. I don't. I wasn't exactly sure what it was that happened here. She was in jail because of what? Or she was at the jail. I, I don't think she's in jail because she's like. I think she's just at the station. Oh, okay. At yeah, that's what I mean. Like at the station. I don't. I don't mean like in jail, like behind bars. But she's sitting down at the police station. Um, and what I, this is what I assumed because basically she saved the kid. Well, I'm thinking she saved the kid, and this is after that. Because you were confused, because this happens first in this book. But, yeah. But it's, it's, I think it's supposed to be after she saved the kid, because, like, what happened? And then she says, oh, I pulled the kid out. So I pulled Zach out. Uh, and for, so for some reason, she was at the house. I'm assuming it's because her and Chase. Chase had a thing. Of- yeah, they have a, a relationship past going on. Um, and so she was there maybe to welcome him, kind of like the sheriff was. And... Uh, but hopefully, for, hopefully better than the sheriff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just mean like he was there to see them as they came in. Uh, but she is throwing up like pond scum is what it looks like to me. Like yeah. gross pond dirt or bog dirt. We'll say bond scum or bog, <laughs> bog scum. Bog scum. Um, and yeah, and that's because she had pulled Zach out from the water. So she had to like dive in there. Um, and the... She's in okay. So after that, she goes to the hospital because she vomits all over the floor. The police are like, "We got to take you to the hospital." And then, um, the Magnus, the sheriff, is like, "What was going on? Like, what happened there?" And basically, she doesn't tell him anything that matters. It was just like, "I saved the kid. He fell in the water." Like, and then the sheriff's like, "I, I know there's more about that bog than there than that family's leading on to." So like, he does mention, and I think you said this that um, the uh, the family seems to be really well off and do well, but the people around them don't. Yeah, like people go missing. Stuff ends up happening to people that uh, they value but aren't part of the family. Yeah, they kind of. There's like a line that says like the the Blaines the Blaines do well, but the people around them don't. The people that yeah they are close to don't. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, we get the flashback uh, as she. I guess they were recounting what happened before she got to the police station and everything, where she saved the kid. Uh, Magnus ends up doing CPR on him because he was drowning. So, and that one I thought was interesting too because, and that's I got a little confused because it shows like some kind of like bog, like they were like hands on him down there, and then the hand that reaches to pull him up is like bogish too, and it's got like viney looking yeah. things, and then it shows a woman in a all bog like, woman, bog woman, a dead, a green, dead looking bog, yeah. Woman green and browns and stuff standing there like i th- i thought she pulled him up maybe and then she you know maybe reese came upon him but I, it was so it, was, it wasn't 100 percent. what i got from that because there's a lot of double imagery in this book of uh someone who is having a vision because there's a lot of like moments where someone is like when she falls when the roots take her shoe when mackenzie's in the house for the first time she doesn't she might see the roots and the tree or whatever but no one else well, is seeing does, that yeah. so i figured that's what this was is uh, it's actually Reese pulling him out, but he's seeing, uh, you know, these bog, bog people, okay. you know, bog lady or bog whatever, uh, looking at him, uh, you know, and the, and what the bog lady says to him is po- she points at him and goes Blaine Blood, and so that's just his last name because he's Blaine, you know, related. So there obviously there's something going on with the Blaine family blood being that part of that bloodline and this house. Mm. Uh, we're mm. not sure exactly what yet. Um, and I still don't know after reading the full book. <laughs> but, but, yeah, so the sheriff ends up saving uh, Zach. And uh, 
so that's nice that he did that even though he's a dick to chase but um but yeah like and then the sheriff says like i don't think you should be allowed to watch these kids basically like yeah but i i have the authority to take them away if i have to yeah and i will so i we're giving him like a southern accent yeah. just because they're in maine so he's probably like i the authority to kill the, take those kids eh? <laughs> whatever Whatever they say. Whatever main accent. I'm trying to. I'm trying to channel, channel my uh, whatever like Dairy Main from, from, <laughs> from Stephen from King Stephen novels. King. Like what do they what do they sound like in those audio books or TV shows? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, uh, so then the family's just kind of like at dinner having a like a fucked up dinner after that experience. Mackenzie doesn't say anything about seeing roots in her foot, and that was the other thing. I wasn't sure because they show her like staring at the tree and like the whispers are happening, but I don't know if she saw it or not. Cause she doesn't mention like, Hey, by the way, I saw a weird spectral tree in this house. I would be fucking terrified yeah. seeing a dead woman body upside down on a creepy fucking tree. Just out of nowhere in, the, in the room. Yeah. 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 Uh, but she's not phased by it at all, apparently, or at least maybe she didn't see it. Maybe it hasn't quite got to her. I was wondering like, maybe she, is she like, the actual daughter of Blaine of Ch- of uh, Charles Blaine, or was it maybe she's adopted or something? She's a little bit older. I didn't know. I wasn't mm-hmm. sure. Um, but they do. Um, but like, yeah, she doesn't mention any of it. And Reese is also there eating with them now that I guess she's out of the hospital kind of thing. She's uh, better. <laughs> she's better. They don't really explain like how she, why she's back here, but I guess she just wanted to go check on the kids. So that's where we find out that like her and uh, Chase had like a bit of a relationship, but that Chase uh, kind of ran away from home and left her high and dry. Um, we don't know why. I still don't know why. Yeah, exactly. they had a relationship. It didn't end well. Yeah, uh, and then we and then we get like the Chase trying to be the dad, like fill in for the dad and get like lunches ready for the the school day and then for the next week. You know, because it is the next week now. So, like, before school starts, he's getting all the kids ready, taking them to school. And, like, one thing I did like about this that is creepy, that's, like, that's why I was saying, like, maybe they're not always seeing these ghosts and stuff. But, like, as he's cutting the sandwich, we see back behind him in the pantry that he was just in getting bread and stuff that there's, there's like, a dead guy just hanging out in the pantry. Like, all right. But, like, he's he's not paying any attention to him and... The ghost or the yeah the ghost is or the specter isn't like uh, saying anything to him either. So That's I don't true. know if he would have seen them if he turned around or if it's just kind of we're here. Yeah, is it? Yeah, are they watching them and they're there or yeah? Because yeah, the, the yeah the one the one that it was very creepy too is the boy's brushing his teeth and he like looks down in the uh, he spits in the sink and then as he spits down like in behind him is a you know it kind of almost looks like the bog lady again like just standing there creepily yeah i didn't know if that was a bog lady or if it was like a kid version like a or a kid that was haunting this place too or whatever because there's multiple ghosts there's like a man ghost and all of them seem to be part of the blaine family though probably a lot of them do so because later on there's uh like the charles charles yeah the the one that just the brother yeah so or their their father their father yeah. yeah um and so yeah, the you know they're getting ready for school. Uh, of course, Reese is the teacher at the school. So yep. like, they just really like what a coincidence. Yeah, a coincidence. <laughs> um, and then like Reese or uh, uh, Mackenzie is seeing like while she's in class, there's like the classic Michael Myers moment uh, when Laurie Strode is in class and he, she looks out the window and sees Michael Myers just standing across the street. Uh, that happens here, except with like a bog monster ghost or whatever, and uh, or bog woman ghost. So Mackenzie sees this woman. Actually, does she see her? Or does she just? I don't think she sees her. She doesn't turn. But the bog woman is just in the window. So Staring. I think all of these are for us, like for the audience. Yeah. Like these little flashes of ghosts, because the characters are not seeing them or referencing them at all. But I think that's just for us to be like, oh shit, stuff's going on, and they don't realize it, you know? Uh, which is kind of clever. I haven't read too many books like that where it's just for us, the reader, that we're getting this ominous ghost happenings that we're seeing but no one else is seeing a lot of it um so and then like the big the next big thing that happens uh in, is chase you know he's still remodeling stuff in the house so he's got all his tools and he notices by the water heater there's like a, a, a cement wall that's not original to the house and he's like what the heck yeah because it's like kind of like interlaid in a brick wall yeah and uh and he notices a crack on it and it's leaking water and he's like great 
like the water heater pipes go through here. Maybe there's a water heater leak. I got to like figure it out. So he's going to bust open this wall. And as he does, uh, he finds a bunch of bricks and vines and everything inside of it. And then he pulls one of the bricks and all this water falls out. And it's gross, gross bog water. And uh, he finds a dead body that also falls out. And it's like, what the hell? So, of course, you know, that's ominous. That's the end of issue two. So yeah. we leave it and and see, and, and then that was one, like, did he see that dead body or? That was a dead body. Yeah. Yes. So that was for sure. Because he sees it. He's like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah. Okay. And then issue three, the sheriff is there being like, so that body was a hobo or like a homeless person yeah. that's, uh, I guess, worked at the house or something. Or I don't know. I don't know exactly what it was, but. Uh, right, that's what it was, right? The he worked at the house. Oh, I, I okay, maybe I missed that. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. I th- I thought this was uh, worse. So it starts off with um, with like we see through the ages. So it's like 1891, 1942, 1963 at the Blaine house. There's all these weird deaths that are happening. Yeah. Um, and then now in 1974. That's they find this body. Yeah, this body. So that's why the sheriff has seen or noticed all these people dying around the Blaines in mysterious ways, and he knows something's going to happen. Um, and so uh, I believe this is a homeless man that they find. But I could be wrong. I, I can't remember. I don't think he was tied to anything important. Yeah, they just they definitely said they. It, it's weird because he also doesn't know where he came from. Maybe um, that's what. I, maybe that's what it was like. They're like, we don't know who this is. Maybe it's just a John Doe. Yeah. Okay. But then they're like, they're still like, mm, maybe, uh, maybe Chase needs a psych evaluate evaluation too. Like, what's up with this guy? Yeah. So the sheriff comes up from the basement as he's there with his deputy, looking at this, this, uh, or the rap. They're putting this body in a body bag, and uh, Chase is not there when he goes to, like question Chase about exactly what happened again because Chase also said when he pulled when he broke the wall open, all this water poured out, but there's no water in the basement. So the water seemed to be special, oh yeah that's true but and the it's body bone wasn't. dry is yeah. what they said yeah so uh, that water the bog water was all in his head but the actual body was not so mm. um, so when he uh, the sheriff Magnus goes up to ask uh, Chase about his story again Chase is gone he's already at a bar drinking apparently that's his old ways he gets in a fight uh, just to I guess get some of his anger and aggression out and whatever he's feeling about all this uh, so. He gets the shit beat out of him by, like, five guys. Uh, and he just leaves the kids at the house with Reese, which if I was Reese, I'd be like, what the fuck? But, you know. <laughs> These ain't my kids, yeah. But Reese is nice enough to at least stay, I guess, though. You know, they they are children. Yeah. So I don't know exactly how old um, Mackenzie is. She, she seems like she's, like, 14 she, or 15 yeah, or something. Yeah, like definitely, obviously not not quite old enough where she feels comfortable with it, especially because they still just lost their parents not that long ago. Yeah. And uh, and so they're all sitting on a, on a couch at night, uh, and like I said, Chase hasn't even come back yet. He's getting the shit beat out of him right now. Uh, and they're asleep on this couch, but it faces a window. I'm like, this is an old house, because that should face a TV, is what that should face. But <laughs> yeah. it's facing a big-ass window, and uh, the dog is with them, and he hears something, and he, pe- he perks up, and he looks out the window, and he sees uh, the Swamp Thing Man shape coming in the window. Bum, bum, bum. And he growls, but then it disappears, and the dog's like, and like kind of like skulks away sadly or like uh scaredly like, yeah. like scared scared i don't know scared yes yeah, scared he 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 was he was scared yes and then as he walks away uh Reese wakes up and she sees the swamp man just staring at her through the window and he's saying give give and yeah it's it's creepy and then she decides you know it'd be a great idea to go down into the basement where that guy was found, the dead body. And I'm going to leave the kids on this couch where that swamp monster was. And I'm going to go down to that basement and I'm going to look in that hole where uh, that body was found. And she finds a bunch of reel to reel tapes, which I was like, what the fuck did she just find here? Because they do not explain it right away. It takes a couple pages. Yeah, that's true. Because I didn't They're just round. Discs. I didn't know what they were at first either. I was like, "Are they old dinner plates?" Or yeah, I was like, "Are these like you know shot? Uh, sh- what are those like oh, shooting the shooting plates? discs? Yeah, yeah, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't understand what these are because they look kind of like targets or something, but they are like real to real tapes. So you know, this is the '70s, so that wasn't that uncommon. Um, which is also like they make a thing because she finds these tapes. 
And then she takes him to the school later and mentions, like, um, like, well, thank God, you know, we have the funding cut on this, on our school, because we still have this real to real player. I'm like, it's 1974. You yeah, would have a real to real player. Because what else are you going to have? You don't want an eight track player or. You're not going to have a CD player, you know, maybe a record player. I don't fucking yeah. know what you would have, but they don't have, like, if you're playing, like, uh, a historical document or something that's on uh, recordings, it's going to be probably, on a reel-to-reel back then. Yeah. So I thought that was, it'd be like if you said, like, oh, a projector. I'm glad we have a projector. It's like, well, that's the only thing we were, able, like, a film projector camera. Yeah. Like, that's the only thing we were allowed to use back then because that's all they had. They didn't have digital cameras. So uh, I thought that was a weird line. That's, that's the kind of thing I'm saying, like, I don't know who wrote that line. But uh, when uh, Morrissey, whatever it was, Michael Morrissey writes books, sometimes it seems like he throws in common sensibilities that aren't necessarily uh, fitting of the time period and whatnot or the place. Um, so anyway, uh, that's a little bit later where they do, you look at the or they listen to the recordings. But uh, first, Chase is brought back to his house uh, by the sheriff. And of course, the sheriff reminds him again, I will take your fucking kids away. Because you're a horrible person. We don't like you. Chase, you fucking suck. And I'm, I'm gunning for you. I'm looking for you. Mm. Um, we also see as Chase walks back into the house, uh, he looks up and at a window. And I don't know if he sees this, but there is a ghost in that window as he... It's like he looks up at the window, then he looks back down. Then the ghost appears for us in the window. It's like a yeah, weird so we thing. don't know if he saw it or not. Yeah, yeah I, it's a weird thing. Um, and then uh, we get... Zach is at school the next day. Oh, yeah, that's the and, next day. Okay, yeah. And, yeah, and he has to, he looks like he has to use the restroom. The teacher's like, it's down the hall, go. Yeah, Reese is the teacher, too. So she's like, yeah, to go, go, go to the bathroom. Here's your Paul pass or whatever. And so he goes to the bathroom, and as he's walking into the stall, he hears something splashing in the toilet. He looks down, he finds a frog, and he's like, I'm going to grab this frog for some fucking reason. Don't grab toilet frogs, all right? Yeah. Then as he's about to grab that, a bunch more frogs start coming out of the drain. And it freaks him out because also a hand reaches out from the This drain. is definitely one of my favorite panels in the yeah, whole comic. Yeah, a hand comes out of the toilet drain uh, amongst the frogs and reaches out to him. And then we see as he runs out, there was like another ghostly person standing behind the door that he opens to leave. Uh, and yeah, he's just freaked out. So It's a very Evil Dead-esque moment, it felt like. Yes, yeah, that's true. It does because it's a toilet and stuff. It's a yeah. little, it's a little comedy in there, it, or it could be. It also is terrifying for some people because the idea of like I'm sitting down, sitting and, down, yeah, and ah, you could grab my ass or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but then uh, Chase, he's he's still at his house. He doesn't know this is going on with Zach, uh, and he's sleeping his uh, hangover slash uh, beating off right now. Yeah, and uh, he wakes up in a fright and he sees. I don't. I'm assuming this was the brother Charles, right? Is it the brother? Or the, I'm not sure if it's the dad, dad or the sure. brother because he says Ch- Charles, and I think it's the brother because he's dressed like the brother was that night. Oh yeah, maybe that that makes more sense. And he's got the mustache. We don't know what the dad looked like, so I'm assuming this so is it's the probably brother Charles. Brother, yeah. And he's all covered in bog water, and he looks all rotten, like he's been sitting in water for a long time. And he's. It looks like he's trying to say something to Chase, and Chase is is like Charles, what's what's going on? What happened? And uh, Charles goes over to him, like, grabs his shoulder, and he's just like, and he's like, I don't understand. And uh, and then he, like, dissolves in his hands and yeah. he turns into, like, floods the whole floor with water. But, of course, that water's not real. And then it turns out Chase was just dreaming that. Or was he because his hands are covered yeah. in, like, pond slime, slime. And then there is a little bit of water on the ground. Bum, so. bum, bum. Uh, and then he gets a phone call. And finds out, okay, Zach had this thing happen to him in school where he got scared in the bathroom. He peed his pants. Uh, and then um, then, then Reese says, or actually Mackenzie calls out Reese because Reese is like, don't worry, I'm here for you. You know, I wouldn't let anything happen to Zach or, Reese, or uh, Mackenzie. And then Mackenzie's like, oh, yeah? Then how come you were down? Yeah, why'd you leave us on the couch the other night and then you went downstairs? Yeah, because uh. she followed, it turns out she followed Reese down there and saw Reese find these tapes. And then, or these reel to reels, and then, uh, and then keep them and not tell uh, Ch- Chase about them. So uh, Mackenzie calls her out, and Reese is like, "Well, okay, about that. Like, I'm not hiding anything from you. I just, I just got them and didn't really know what to do with them. And I figured I got a reel to reel here. 
So like we'll listen to these tapes together then. And I was gonna yeah. let you know before I did that. I, I did like <laughs> Chase is like, I need to listen to these right now. Right now. <laughs> And I was like, don't do it. I, I was worried there's going to be like, I didn't know where this story was going to go. I'm like, yeah. is this going to be like Necronomicon? Oh, yeah. Or some shit? <laughs> like, you know, Nikto Verata, <laughs> Klepto Verata Nikto or whatever. It's like, oh, don't, don't say it. Don't say don't the words. In the Book of the Dead. Uh, but yeah, that's not what it was. Uh, I What it is, is it's like, um, I guess it's the dad or I'm, I'm assuming it's the dad. Um talking about like the family curse but the but talking about the family curse and saying it's coming for him or is it the grandfather is it the grandfather? i think it's the grandfather okay yeah. it's the grandfather um saying uh like the curse is coming for me i tried to avoid it but it's coming for sure i'm so sorry i don't want to do this and this is what happened i don't know why he would record this this is like a confession to murder but he buries it in the wall with the guy that he murdered it's so for his family to find I don't know. With the dead body? With yeah. the dead body, That's I nice guess. of him. So it's, it's all for us to understand kind of what's going on. Although it doesn't explain that much. It just says, like, it's coming for me. There's a bog, or there's there's a, a uh, you know, a curse around our family. Uh, or I don't even know. He doesn't even use the word curse. He just says, like, it's it's got to do with our family. And, you know, I had to kill this guy. And I'm sorry. I didn't want to. But it was coming for me. And then that's kind of where it leaves it, yeah. you know? And he, that's where the heat, because he's like, this guy was a vagrant, and so I didn't think, you know, anybody would miss him, and, like, the bog, you know, needed needed something, and so I gave it to him, to it. But, yeah, they're still coming. Yeah, and then, of course, as this is playing, uh, stuff starts happening around the, the room. Bog, the bog hears him. The bog hears him. <laughs> and the bog starts filling up the light bulb with bog water, and, of course, that's not good, and it explodes. And then as the lights go out, luckily, Reese had a fucking flashlight on her. She's a teacher. She's prepared. I guess. And as she turns the light on, we see old swampy bog monster is like the shadow of, of him is behind it. It's kind of like Dracula, the uh, Bram Stoker one from yes. the 90s, where whenever Dracula's walking, his shadow's doing something else. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, wherever the bog monster is, his shadow is here spooking these people out. So, uh, But it was creepy. And the other thing I was wondering, wondering about this is uh, because later on... Um, I don't know if this happens in this one or the second one. I, they kind of blend together for me. But she gets kind of possessed by... It's this one. Okay. Yeah, so I was like, I wonder if she's already... Like, if that bog monster came into her and that's why she went... That night, maybe. ...down into there and then opened the wall. But she's not showing in her eyes because later on when they show her, like, possessed, she has red eyes. Yeah. So... Uh, just like Swamp Thing. And so, <laughs> so so I don't know if they're insinuating that she has this bog monster in her right now, but that's kind of what it feels like, possibly. Um, and basically, the, the tape, I like this part. The tape, I don't know if this would happen. The tape, when it's done, is just on and repeating the word give, 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 give. So it seems like the bog is asking them to give something so they can receive whatever the bog has to give them now we're saying the bog yeah we're saying the bog but it doesn't say that we're insinuating because of what i know happens later that it's the bog well no no, the the grandfather did say that the 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 bog requires something so from right but it doesn't to me a bog is a place right it's not like a it's it's not a demon i'm thinking the bog is the home of a demon or something possible i i could think of like i could think of a place as like being like you know, uh, taken over by like a spirit or right, but I don't know why it just didn't feel like that in this to me. Okay, I took I got that. well, it could be taken over by a spirit, but that spirit is the thing, not the bog. You know what I'm saying? Like this makes it seem like, like later on, the bog itself is the thing. Is the, yeah. Like there's no mention of like another higher deity or lower deity or whatever, like a demon or something. Yeah, uh, that is the reason for this. It just the bog calls the bog itself. The bog itself calls and. If you give, you will receive. So, um, yeah, that's kind of like where it leaves you hanging on the third issue there. And then the fourth issue is the last issue of this trade. We start off with a young Chase and a young Reese, and they're at a, I guess we're like learning about like, what happened with them, like why Chase left or whatever. And this is like the first, or the last time they hung out, right? I think so, yeah. So there's like a bonfire in, in uh, the Blaine backyard next to this bog, I'm assuming. And uh, Chase and Reese go off for a bit, 
Or actually, Reese goes off, and Charles goes up to Chase and goes, hey, buddy, you got to make your move, man. She's totally into you. You should totally go for it. So good big brother, you know, helping him out. Uh, so Chase follows, and he goes through the woods where Reese was walking, and she goes all the way to uh, – well, we, we follow her first into the woods after Chase goes into. So she's further than him. And she thinks she's following Chase. She sees someone in front of her. And it's like, come on, but it's in the shadows. So she's following it with a lantern, and it goes all the way to the bog. So it leads her. And then uh, she's like, Chase, we're not supposed to, as this person walks into the bog water. And then uh, she follows and kind of looks down into the bog water and then it looks like Chase's face screaming under the water. And she's like, what? And then it jumps out and pulls her into the water uh, head first and then gives her a big old smooch on the face, too. Yeah. So I'm not sure what this, the kiss is necessarily. but Got to get them them bog kisses. Yeah. I don't know. But this is like, so the last time we saw the bog monster kiss someone, it they, was they died. Yeah, they died. So I was like, okay, so she she died or what? What happened here? But uh, she doesn't die because the next panel we see her. She's at you know we already know she lived from that moment right because she's older now in the comic. That was a, a flashback. So uh, now we see her talking to Magnus at a diner, and it turns out Magnus used to have a crush on her, and that's why he hates Chase most likely is because Chase left her hanging, and then she wouldn't go out with him after that. And he's like, it's Chase's Bru- fault. It's all Chase's fault. It's all Chase's fault. It's not because I'm a dickhead or anything. So, uh, so yeah. And then she warns Magnus, like, don't, you know, don't go, like, don't harass Chase. Like, stay away from the Blaine house. You don't want none of that. And he's like, I'll do what I want. You know, just because you love him doesn't mean I won't, you know, kick his ass or whatever. Well, she says that, like, yeah, like, things are different with them. But, like, they uh, they didn't find her until the next day. And it was Charles that found her, but everybody blamed Chase for it. Yeah, like, but like doing something to her. But the interesting thing is, we don't know. Like, okay, so she fell in the water but didn't drown. Like, what the fuck? Like, I, I don't. They don't explain. No. So what happened? It, they. You know it, what? It Maybe under kiss? the water, she. It wasn't a kiss. It was breathing air into her lungs. Oh, there you go. It was saving her. Yeah, exactly. It was like, what are you doing down here? It's yeah. too, you're you're going to drown here. Yeah. <laughs> and then we see in the window next to her, the bog monster is looking at her like. <gasps> so maybe this is about the bog monster trying to find love with the Blaine family. That's what it is. It's just like, hey, if you give me love, you will receive love. And they're like, oh, you want a dead body? And he's like, no, I want your love. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it is exactly is. But we cut to Chase. Uh, we cut away from the diner, and we cut to Chase, who is visiting his mother, which we didn't know was alive yet, but she is still alive. Uh, she is at, like, an old folks' home, and apparently she had, like, a stroke or something. Or whatever happened to the dad messed her up. Fucked her up, whatever she saw. And so she has not talked, kind of like Zach hadn't talked, really, um, once, he, once, you know, the parents died, uh, or his, dad, his parents died at the beginning of this book. Um, the mom hasn't talked at all. She's like kind of in shell shock, but all of a sudden, I guess he got, maybe got a call from the old folks home because she's been talking now and she's been drawing something. And then what we find out is she's been drawing as Chase goes up and kind of tries to talk to her, um, that she's saying like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't the past. And she's just kind of like being in like a manic state, but she's drawing the attic door. And then uh, as Chase looks at it, at the drawing, he goes like, oh, the attic? And she's like, don't go in the attic. And she, like, freaks out at him. And uh, he's like, what are you doing to her? Like, it seemed like he was blaming the old folks home. Like, like what's going on? Like, what? why is she freaking the fuck out? And doesn't understand that this is, like, something to do with the house and the curse and whatever the fuck's going on. Like, the stuff that happens in here, I'm like, you would think you tie it to what's going on, all the other shit that's been happening in the last three issues. But uh, that is not the case. He doesn't tie it there real quick. Uh, so then we cut to um, the Sheriff Magnus, and he's talking about the body that they found at the house with his um, with his deputy. And it turns out, because he's like, hey, we did that. We got the results back from the, the test of the ground because um, Chase had said it was wet, you know, filled with water. But we just tested the ground. Nothing there except it had levels of, like, acidity and like pickling juice basically like it like it pickled this body um and 
and whatever it was also spilled on the ground, but it's not there. It wasn't water or whatever. So it seems like, I don't know, something weird's happened. Uh, and it's like, it's almost like the bog pickled this guy and like preserved his body over time. Um, and so, uh, I don't remember if they say why, uh, oh, I know what it is. He goes there because he needs to test the water in the bog to see like, oh, maybe cause, cause he's like, wait, the house is far away from the bog. So this body being there doesn't make any sense unless it was, it was brought there by Chase, yep. and then Chase said, oh, there was water everywhere, and I broke open this wall, but he's full of shit. So the sheriff is like, I got him now. Like, I've, there's something going on. If I test the bog water, it will tell me, you know, that Chase is full of shit, and then uh, I'll catch him. So he goes there in the middle of the night, you know, as you do. He's going to go on private property in the middle of the night, not with a warrant. So it's fine. It's I, fine, you know? But, hey, you sometimes you just got to do what you got to do, right? That's yeah. what police do. In the meantime, we see the kids are, or at least Zach is scared. He's sleeping with Chase. Mackenzie comes in, decides to sleep with them, too. Uh, and then um, all of a sudden they realize their dog is not with them. And they're like, what? Where's the dog? What's the dog's Where's name, John? Dog? Tage? I, I didn't get the dog. Tag? Tag? It's T-A-G-E. And I was like, who the fuck is Tag? Because, like, Tag? where's Tag? I'm like. Or Tage. I don't know Tage? what the fuck it is. It's the weirdest dog name I've ever heard, so I don't know. Ruffy. Advantage Spot. is what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, so anyway, then we cut to the outside where it's pouring rain, of course. And uh, this is apparently the beginning of, like, the biggest fucking storm of all time. They don't say that on the radio or anything. No one knows about it until the second volume, which you didn't read, but I did. This storm continues, like, pouring like Noah levels of rain fills up all the ground for to like five feet. So like the oh, bottom wow. floor of the house is covered with water later on, but we don't know that yet because they have not said that. So uh, it is just a very bad night to be out in the, in the wilderness or not in the wilderness, but at a bog, I'm sure this bog is about to overflow too, by the way, but uh, the, the sheriff is there and he's about to test some water, get some soil samples, whatnot. Uh, and as he's doing that, he thinks, uh, or he hears someone behind him, and then he thinks it's going to be Chase. And he's like, listen, I... And then he looks up, and he gets stabbed in the chest by this person with, like, a some sort of hook thing? I don't know what the fuck it was. Yeah, he I don't know. It was something he brought with him, some kind of hook. Yeah, and we see who it is is actually Reese. Reese pushes him into the bog, and she's got possessed... Oh, this time it's green eyes. And the other one in the second volume That's is right. red eyes. So I don't know what the... I don't know what the difference of the eye color means, but... Either way, uh, she tried to warn him. Yeah, she says in a so it's got the voice of the bog. Whenever the bog talks, it's in like black um, uh, talking bubbles. And so her voice is now in these talk, these black talking bubbles. And it says, I tried to warn you give. And then she pushes the sheriff into the bog. And then all these hands come out, all these decrepit dead hands come out and grab him and pull him down into the bog. And then the swamp monster comes out and kisses him. Yep, just like he <laughs> just like he tends to do. Or maybe, he's, oh, he's not giving him air this time. No. And so uh, then all of a sudden she snaps out of it and is like, Magnus? And then she, like, lets go. And, of course, the dog is there now for some reason. We don't know why, but the dog followed them. And then uh, and then she, like, snaps too, but she's not fully snapped too. It's like she's in shock now or something because her eyes don't have the green possession tint on them now, but she's just wide-eyed now saying, Magnus? I, I tried, and, you know, she's very, like, in shock about what just happened. And yeah, whatever. I assume she tried to fight it is what she was saying. But. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Chase, who's been looking for the dog in the house, hears the dog whining outside, opens the door. Uh, the dog runs in like, get me the fuck in this house. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go out there. Yeah. Shit's happening. It's crazy. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, uh, Chase, as he lets the dog in, starts hearing a thumping noise, and it turns out it's the attic door and so he's like oh i gotta go up there and see what's going on uh because you know what if it's a leak or something it says thump i don't know if it's a if he I, thinks it's like a leak like a drip or if it's like what would be thumping up there a raccoon or some shit i don't know well he's like it's trying he says it's trying to lure me yeah but but, what but he also says this is not real yeah. or it's not real so uh he decides to go up there and he goes up there and there's nothing up there initially he's like okay 
We're all in the clear. So he goes up further. It's a very, like, nicely well put together, like, writing, desk. writing space. Yeah. And there is a manuscript on top that says the account of life and death in the new world by, uh, or as told by Victus Blaine. So this is the initial Blaine founder. And we didn't know what that was or who who that guy was, but it's like the great, 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 great granddad of yeah. the Blaines. And he is, I'll just spoil it, he is the one that started this curse uh, or this deal with the devil or whatever the fuck it is. Um, the deal with the bug. And so uh, he starts to read it. And as he reads it, the door slams shut. He tries to go over and open it. But then all of a sudden, roots start springing out of the floor. Water comes rising up out of the boards. Uh, and he tries to open it, but it, no, it's no use. Water starts pouring out of the ceiling and everything, too. And he's yelling to the kids, and the kids are yelling at him, like, what's going on? And he's like, "Like it's okay, it's okay. And they're like, Uncle Chase, please. And then the water slowly rises, and he uh, eventually just gets covered with water, and that's where it cuts off. That's where this book ends. And then I turn the page and I'm like, okay, what happens? And then there's nothing. And I'm like, nothing. Okay. Well, that was a f- weird first trade, but okay. So as you can see, I had to finish this yes. fucking book because you can't just leave a fucking story in the middle. I probably of would have. I did. If I had seen the, the second one on there, but well, I, I didn't buy it until today. So uh, I just read it before you came over. So, so, uh, please fill us in. Okay. So like the next issue starts with what happened to Victus Blaine. So it's like that story that he just picked up. Um, and what it, we, I don't know exactly how this, th- like I said, there's never any mention of an actual ghost or spirit or demon that Victus Blaine makes, makes a deal with. But basically, he lives in a town in Maine and it's not going well. It is the 1600s and, you know, the f- crops aren't growing, nothing's going good. So he's kind of losing his faith uh, in God. And, you know, that's obviously in the town that's very religious and everything. And, um, and so for some reason he gets called to the bog one night by something. Cause he's praying just out loud, not necessarily to God, maybe just saying like, I need something, something, something or whatever. And happen. then, yeah. Okay. And then something, the bog calls to him and tells him to like, come forth. And then that's where he learns the phrase or like the bog tells him, like, if you give, you will receive. And the give is he's got to make a sacrifice into the bog and, the, and then, prosperity will happen to him makes so, sense um yeah of course as you do and so he sacrifices the lover or the uh suitor the guy who's trying to woo his daughter um and so nice. yeah that's basically you know and then she potential finds, son-in-law mm, yeah let's kill him it's not a son-in-law because they're not married yet but it's like she's you know potential potential no. that's why i said this is her suitor or whatever yeah. it's the guy it's the guy who's trying to uh what do they call it? C Anne or, or C, C like in, in the Patriot where yeah. like, I'd like to call on your daughter or whatever. It's like that. Uh, and so um, he like kills that guy. Cause he's like, fuck that guy. Like, <laughs> like he's trying to, he's trying to get with my daughter. Like, fuck that guy. So uh, he throws that guy in the bog and that's the beginning of this curse. So uh, what I gather just from like, and, that, and they don't explain the curse. There's no, like now it is sealed and forevermore. My relatives will, will, give you a person every year or whatever and if not then we will be taken oh there's, there's no none of yeah, there's, there's no, no explanation like of any of that shit oh wow uh so that's why I'm like we're just assuming the curse is because the dad or the grandpa says when he seals that dude up in the wall uh you know it's coming for me so obviously if i kill this guy it will placate whatever's coming for him so that's what i get from it they don't explain that at all um it's very like uh, obfuscated or whatever, <laughs> like the uh, the the what's going on with this deal or curse or whatever. So, um, yeah. And then, uh, do you want me to spoil the whole book? Yeah. Okay. I'll or spoil- or sh- would your, do we not want to spoil it for our listeners? I want to spoil the whole book because maybe they want to go read it. Um, I will say I liked this whole story overall with the second book, you know, ending. There just was a little bit of, uh, or there was a lot of. We're leaving. We're dropping like clues and breadcrumbs of these things, but we're not fully answering your questions. We're, and there is no like full closure on exactly what happened with the bog and hmm. like why or like what exactly happens. I wasn't exactly sure how they defeat it either. Like it didn't fully make sense to me uh, why they were able to defeat it the way they were. So I don't want to spoil that book because if they if they like the ending of this and they want to continue, 
but uh there is like you know big fights that happen uh with like bog monster and stuff and uh there is some kind of closure but it's not necessarily the closure you would think for so the swamp thing monster comes back the swamp thing monster does come back okay. and actually like kicks some ass and stuff so nice. it starts fighting them so um and i'm assuming maybe that's the curse you know maybe that that monster is like it's going to come if you don't give it will it will take you know it will it will get its its price by with this monster uh, so maybe that's why he killed charles cuz charles wasn't giving uh in the way that he wanted you know charles was trying to help humanity with his pharmaceutical company as you know all pharmaceutical company owners do he he was a yeah he was a people first oh of course yeah I, as his house showed it yeah. was very <laughs> very much very current. modest means yes uh <laughs> for, so he was the the poorest uh executive of a he, pharmaceutical company there was he only did stock buybacks once his a house year only cost a hundred million dollars yes. right um uh, but anyway uh yeah so john what would you give it what did you think so um, i'll give my rating a caveat and an asterisk for this one i will uh being that i know a little more of the story um and i'll get to know all the story obviously and um well, I would say I would say maybe rate this one volume like like say the one, what you would that's have rated what, it. Oh, okay, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So mine is going to get that that star on it, the asterisk. Um, I would give this one a six. So I enjoyed it and I liked where it was going and I liked the art a lot. I liked the designs of the monster and all of the creepy stuff in it. it was very cool. I liked all of that. Um, but yeah, it just fell a little flat for me as far as like a where it ends and then b like like you said kind of like hinting at things but then like like you i didn't get anything in this first yeah like, like what's going get, like, on anything. No it was all atmosphere so, yeah. and like even yeah and then i'm like okay like that one, the, the one issue we start to get a little backstory and i'm like oh good now we'll, nope nothing yeah it cuts away before you get okay anything. well all right then so um so yeah i'm gonna give it a six uh, but again, that, it, that's the asterisk because, like I said, I know obviously there's a little more to it, and then there's there are some cooler things that happen. Um, but yeah, it just didn't it, like it was fun, and I enjoyed it, and I definitely like would like to continue reading. But it just didn't uh, it didn't quite give enough that that a, I think a first trade should to get you to yes. like, keep reading the story. Yeah, I feel like this should have been just both together, trades exactly. together in all eight issues, at least to make it like because what they could do. Is if they did that, then trade one is this story arc, and you want to know what the fuck is exactly going on, and then they could just do an ongoing and f- you know give you more of that backstory that you want. There's a couple series that are doing that a little bit better. Silver Coin, mm-hmm. each issue is a standalone story, but it all ties together with this silver the coin, coin that is cursed, and then every six issue or every f- every six if six six issue, uh, he will. Um, give you the like origin of the coin through time or whatever. So it explains the lore. And so, so it ties all these stories together. Well, oh, nice. I really like that. So it's very like, this isn't an ongoing, this is just the trade, the one story. So it's kind of like, what the fuck? And maybe they could do like a season two or whatever of it and explain more, but it definitely leaves you like me, it left me unsatisfied with like w- the answers we got of which there wasn't any, I didn't think. Uh, it was very, very little of like I'm. I'm inferring a lot of this mythology myself, just from what you're showing. But they did not explain anything explicitly. Like I said, there, there's literally a written manuscript, and the guy could have been like, "And so I sold my soul to the bog monster, and you know, I didn't quite understand it. Even that, like maybe he didn't understand it either. But he's like, it called to me. It said, give and and it will receive. So I did it, and I received. So this is what's going on, and and I and and then, uh, like maybe one year, you you have a or one of the issues you have a flashback of a year that he was like, I don't want to kill anybody, and then it shows like, oh, it's gonna fucking murder me, but so I have to do it, kind of thing, something like that, where it's, it's more explicitly spelled out. Some people like this kind of you know, uh, ethereal background story that doesn't really like it should make it kind of spooky because it doesn't fill in all the holes for you. People like holes sometimes in these like. Uh, supernatural stories you know maybe you don't want it all spelled out for them um but i do i i like this uh i would like it if it was a little bit more spelled out so i'm gonna give it a six too i think it was solid actually like as a read it really flew by like and it was well done like the pacing of it was really well uh 
done and and like it leaves you right there like the kids like you kill, what's going on chase oh the water uh, uh. And then it leaves you hanging so you got to read the second volume you know so like that that's good like if you're trying to sell books like that but if you're trying to sell books like that give me a little bit more in uh in the exactly what's happening how did this monster exactly get defeated at the end uh did it get defeated at the end? i don't even know if it got fully defeated at the end maybe it just stopped the curse yeah you turn the page and it's the eye opens back up yeah exactly or something i don't know um so uh yeah i'm gonna give it a six you're gonna give it a six uh we already kind of said but we are reading ghost world, ghost world next week uh so that's the start of our bi-monthly podcast now so uh we'll do that one and then on the third week of november we will do which is thanksgiving week i think it's the week of thanksgiving yeah maybe maybe the week before i can't remember i don't know exactly the, the timing of it but uh but yeah it, yeah it's probably i think it is the thanksgiving week um but yeah that will be only comics about turkeys next month yeah <laughs> exactly uh i don't think there are any comics just about turkeys just about turkeys yet <laughs> yet <laughs> that <laughs> we're coming up with all the ideas that we know y'all want yeah so uh so yeah we're gonna read ghost world uh so there is a movie so i don't know if you, if you guys want to check that out beforehand uh but the uh the book itself is by daniel klaus it is like an alt comic that appeared in a uh, anthology series called eight ball over like a span of years so these were all like little mini stories little vignettes that were uh issue by issue with with a bunch of other series as well that he was writing at the same time in, in eight ball i feel like if you if you liked ghost world this is like you like daria and like that kind of very much so okay it seems like it fits in into fact, that crowd okay so this is from the early 90s mm-hmm. uh, i think the, the series might have even started in the late 80s so this predates that so this is actually what daria came from, came from okay. so, like that that, that sensibility angsty, of yeah. those angsty girls that are wearing you know uh ironic glasses of their grandma and shit like that that's all from this nice daniel klaus created a whole subculture unto himself uh without trying to like he was just like this is my sensibilities and then people liked I mean, it so much they, they were like that's me and then they would you know fill in and dress like that and shit. So nice. Um, so yeah, I like that a lot. It definitely has, like you said, a Daria is a good call on that. Uh, so it's a good feel uh, or a similar feel to that. So um, yeah, you got anything else, John? Nope. I think with that, we'll uh, see you on the next one. On the next one. Bye. Bye.